what is up guys welcome back to the keep it hoop youtube channel today i wanted to talk about robert williams and his game three performance the insane impact he had on that game he ended up with eight points seven defensive rebounds three offensive rebounds four blocks three steals solid numbers very solid numbers but they're not going to stand out crazy and they're quite frankly not going to get talked about nearly as much as Jason Tatum's 26.9 assists, six rebound performance, or Jalen Brown's 27.9 rebound, five assist stat line, or even the game that Marcus Smart had with 24 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. But Robert Williams had himself a great game, huge impact in game three. And I mean, it was interesting to see because throughout the playoffs, he's been laboring with a knee injury. And, you know, he's he's missed a few games. And even when he's out there, he doesn't necessarily look like he's, you know, fully healthy. He looks like a shell of himself. And I don't know what changed. I don't know what they did before game three. But Robert Williams looked healthier, looked more explosive. And just overall was was, was huge for that Celtics team, you know, and, and was big in, in securing that win for them last night. Um, and you're going to see right here, it's a simple offensive rebound at the beginning of the game. But I don't know if he gets to this in, in, in the other games. You know, it's the activity level, the athleticism. It's, it seems like it's back, or at least it was for one game. Celtics end up getting this loose ball, get it out to Jalen Brown. He ends up knocking down that open three to start the game to get him going. Now, before we go you know, any further, I did want to point out why Robert Williams is so important, right? Number one, great rim protector. Takes their defense to a whole nother level because not only is he a good rim protector, he, like Horford, is one of the better big men at going out onto the perimeter and guarding smaller guys, quicker guys when needed, you know, whether it's on a switch or a broken play, you know, so that helps. Two, and we'll go over this later, big lob threat, something that the Celtics don't have outside of him, right? His athletic uh, ability, his, his uh, vertical threat, it, it's it's big for that team. It helps Tatum and Brown and even a guy like Marcus Smart or Derek White, whenever they can get into the lane, opens up so much for them and makes things easier for them. So that's huge. Three, it's especially big in this series because of the matchups. Now, basketball has always been a matchup sport. And and it's, it's very evident in this series because the Warriors we know like to go small, at least offensively, you know, the death lineup when when – they really need to win games or when they're the it's crunch time in the past they've gone to small lineups you put Draymond at the five and then you surround him with Steph Clay and then you know two other guys who can either shoot or handle the ball you know Wiggins or a Jordan Poole um even at even a Gary Payton when they need to you know as, as a slasher um and in the past it was obviously you know a mixture of KD and Iggy and those guys it's hard to do that against the Celtics team when Robert Williams is playing, um, but also especially when he's healthy, like he looked last night, because then the Celtics have two guys who are above average rebounders, you know, pretty good rebounders, Robert Williams more so than Al Horford, but two guys who can rebound. And it works offensively because Williams is the lob threat in that dunker position, good screen setter, Horford another good screen setter, but he has the ability to handle the ball a little bit initiate the offense but also and more importantly step out and knock down that three-point shot so they have offensively and defensively the ability to play big something the Warriors struggle against um have, or have struggled against so far in this series because to match up with that defensively and to make sure that the Celtics don't just get every offensive rebound a lot of times they need Kavon Looney or a Bielitz out there but you know, offensively, that's not when they are at their best. You put Kavon Looney out there, and as much as, you know, I like Kavon Looney, solid player, does all the little things, does all the dirty work, you know, very little ego, seems like a great teammate, UCLA legend. He can't really help the offense that much. You know, he's not a, a KD, he's not a Jordan Poole. And sure, you can still put Jordan Poole out there, but he's, you know, not the greatest defender. And you already have Steph, who I think last night, when he was the perimeter uh, or the uh, the the primary defender, Celtics player shot like seventy percent with him um, as the prim uh, pri primary defender. So, you know, the, the Warriors still need some kind of perimeter defense, and and sure you have Wiggins, but he struggles to get going sometimes, and his numbers look solid, but still again relies on his teammates 
um, to really, you know, get him going sometimes. So um, matchup wise, Robert Williams makes it very tough for the Warriors to do what they want and how they want. And and he's he's for that reason, one of those guys, guys who's impact on a game and impact for a team goes beyond whatever the stat sheet may say on any given night. So this play in the first quarter, prime example of Robert Williams and his room protection. Jordan Poole is going to get a handoff right here and get into the lane. Now, if you freeze it right here, you would assume that this possession ends in a positive for the Warriors. You have Gary Payton cutting right here along the baseline. Really nice cut. Assume that he would probably either get a dunk or maybe get to the free throw line. If that doesn't happen, you have Kavon Looney trailing here. He's going to either get maybe a lob a dump down or an offensive rebound opportunity or you know maybe Jason Tatum stops that and then you have Otto Porter Jr. spotted up right here for a wide open three so you know the Warriors have a lot of options offensively here and you know the Celtics are in a pretty tough spot Jason Tatum has to go over to Kavon Looney who's the initial screener who Robert Williams is helping off of Jalen Brown is kind of stuck in no man's land again has his back to Gary Payton but also has to be looking out for Otto Porter Jr. on the weak side. Well, Robert Williams, again, stops Jordan Poole from having an easy layup after getting the dribble handoff and beating Derek White, right? Stops him, and then just contests Gary Payton, clean block, keeps the ball inbounds, and the Celtics now have a semi-transition opportunity. Not too long after, you have another play where Grant Williams, very bad closeout. You know, we talk about on an ideal closeout, Arms up, but also short, choppy feet, long strides there. One really long step to get out. Beal eats a nice read. It's an obvious read to just drive by right there. Robert Williams sees that, erases that mistake. Again, clean block, keeps the ball in play. Another fast break opportunity. So this is just more of an eye test, you know, a uh, 10-minute mark in the second quarter. Not really a highlight play, not a very important play. But this was a play that made me say, okay, Maybe Robert Williams is back. Maybe he's healthy. And I don't know if it's for the rest of the series or just for this game, but, you know, seems to have an extra, you know, hop to a step right here. Uh, gets it to Tatum, slips the screen, gets it, and then just explodes up for the dunk. Not sure, you know, in the past, in the other playoff series or even early on this series, not sure if he goes up for that. All right, so we talked about the ability that he has to, to be a vertical threat for this team, a lob threat something that Horford can't do, something that Daniel Tice can't do. Um, and right here, again, it, it shows as he's, you know, shows that he's more healthy, um, you know, Draymond's going to be more hesitant and reluctant to help out, which is just going to open up more lanes for the Jalen Browns, the Jason Tatums, the Marcus Smarts, the, the Derek Whites. Again, having that lob threat for an offense, can be huge and just open things up and make things easier for everyone else. Basketball and NBA fans will know that a lot of NBA teams like to run a lot of drop coverage nowadays, right? And for those of you that don't know, drop coverage pretty much means when a when a guard, you know, is getting the screen and the big man or whoever's guarding the initial initial screener, he's going to drop back, right? Drop back in coverage, you know, make the offensive player, make the move. And, and this works, especially if you're playing against a guy, a ball handler who's not a great pull-up shooter. Um, and you assume he's going to want to attack and you just kind of meet him uh, lower down in the block or in the paint. Hard to do that against the Warriors because Steph has insane range and, you know, he can pull up from here, right? 30 feet out, right? Can pull up from anywhere. Hard to run, um, consistent drop coverage. But it's also hard because as a big, you have to be disciplined in how hard, how high and just how you hedge in general because if you're hedging too hard and you're meeting him too high or you're too, too upright, Steph is good enough where he can just read that, uh, split the screen, or just drive right past you, right? And that's what makes him, or one of the many reasons that makes him um, so good on offense. You see here, um, Tatum's going over the screen um, and tries to do a, as good of a job as he can. The Warriors set a lot of screens. Um, Gary Payton, just quick fundamental note here, really wide base, even if you're guard, you can set good screens. The wider base you have, the more space you cover up. Good screen by Gary Payton right there. Steph is obviously looking whenever he sees a little bit of a drop coverage. Like this is a decent amount of space for him. So he's looking to pull up and shoot this. Robert Williams in a little bit of a drop coverage right here, but still has the instincts, the, the hand-eye coordination, the reaction speed 
and the athleticism and wingspan to get out and contest this. Now, this isn't a perfect contest. It's still a makeable shot for Steph, but, you know, you still make him see multiple guys. Uh, pretty good and decent contest there. Another play here where he gets a deflection, and again, the, the, that was a, a theme last night. The Celtics were able to force a lot of live ball turnovers, or if they weren't forcing turnovers, um, just getting a lot of stops and getting out in transition. Now, you're going to see the kind of defense that Steph Curry has to play against because right here, right, uh, go back a little bit, because of the, the, the lineup that the Warriors currently have out there and just the floor balance in general, the Celtics have three guys surrounding Steph Curry. You have Marcus Smart trailing, Jason Tatum helping off of Draymond Green, and Robert Williams off of Gary Payton, right? And again, those guys that I just named, Draymond Green, non-factor on offense. He's not going get, to get up many shots, not a scoring threat, not going to look for his own shot. Gary Payton, decent cutter, but again, not going to get his own shot and not going to spot up. So Steph is seeing three bodies right here. Where he sees two, and he probably feels Marcus Smart behind, so he's feeling three. Um, nonetheless, again, Robert Williams does a nice job here. Despite being a big, gets his hand on it and then gets another uh, transition opportunity. Another good hedge here by Robert Williams. This time gets up a little higher than than the last uh, contest we saw him uh, have. Tatum screened off. Robert Williams here picks stuff up. Steph looking to drive. Just keeps him in front of him. Does a nice job. Forces yet another turnover. Big stop for the Warriors uh, were the Celtics right there. Another pair of good defensive plays here. Grant Williams gets beat pretty easily by Steph here on just a, a kind of float dribble and then just drive by. Uh, Robert Williams on Draymond. Again, not a lob threat. Not going to do much from that position. Um, you know, very makeable floater here for Steph, but Robert Williams gets up super high. Again, I don't know if he makes his block in, in the other games, right? Games one and two and early on, or maybe in that Miami series. I don't know if he gets there, but uses his athleticism. Really good timing, clean block. And then uh, the next play after, right here. Again, this is simple, simple stuff, but just being disciplined to know, you know, always you, you got to contest. Got to contest the likes of Clay and Steph. Forces another miss here and hustles all the way back to get his hands on the rebound. So, look, you know, again, his stats aren't crazy. Um, it's a good game, you know, for sure, but... You look at those stats and it's not something that you're probably going to see um, on the bottom ticker um, on ESPN or NBA TV. Um, it's not even something that a lot of casual fans are going to tweet about or talk about. It's not going to be a lot of highlight videos. But Robert Williams plays winning basketball. He's a huge part to the Celtics team. And um, I think you saw it last night. So I think his health, his explosiveness, his availability and the amount of minutes he can play and how effective he can be in those minutes – that ultimately might be one of the biggest deciding factors of if the Celtics can actually go and, and, and takes take the rest of the series and, and win the championship. You know, obviously there's going to be a lot of eyes on Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, even a, even the defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, and some of the offensive games he can have and or or can't have because sometimes he shoots his teams and, and turns the ball over uh, too much to to you know lead to a loss. But you know, Robert Williams. As weird as it is to say, as important to this team's success as, as probably anyone outside of Tatum. You know, I still think Tatum, his success, um, and, and whenever he can get going, scoring the ball, because he can go off for 40 on any given night. He can carry the, the load offensively. If he can limit his turnovers, you know, he's still the, the main guy for Boston. But Outside of that, like Robert Williams, arguably, you can make an argument for being the second most important player for that team, which is crazy to say. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, should be back tomorrow with another one. Um, we got game four tomorrow, so that would be interesting. Uh, excited for that. I got the Warriors winning that, but I had the Warriors winning game three. I had the Warriors winning the finals in five, so I've already been proved wrong. So shout out, uh, shout out to, to the Boston Celtics. Um, hats off to them and the way they've been playing. They've just been the better team so far. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And uh, we will see you guys again soon. Peace.